Hello everybody, welcome to Grace Bear Reviews. Let's go see what's in the fridge today. Hey everybody, welcome to Greg's Beer Reviews today. Today's beer, we're going to do something a little on the lighter side. Uh, this was sent to me by Sarah, and uh, she's a representative uh, for Hacker Shore and, and Paul Anner Beers. And she sent me a package once before, and out of the blue, I got another beer mail package with a couple of beers and a mug, a stein, uh, in the box. So, uh, I figured uh, we'd start off, uh, it's a nice, uh, warm, 50... 50 some degree day out here and uh, say we'll start off with something light. I don't drink a lot of lagers anymore guys. I drank enough lagers in my younger days to float a battleship around but it was that old macro shitty ass beer. So a lot of adjuncts, a lot of corn, a lot of rice involved in it and uh, just basically drank those beers not for the taste just to get shit faced. Basically, to put it bluntly, uh, that's all those beers are basically good for. There are no taste to those beers. Uh, uh, a lot of corn and rice and adjuncts. Uh, you want to drink something uh, that you can buy really cheap and drink mass quantities of it uh, just to get drunk, uh, yeah, uh, that'll work. But once you get into these style of beers uh, from uh, Germany, uh, they don't use any of that corn and rice and adjuncts and stuff. Uh, they're all brewed by the... Uh, uh, the Bavarian Purity Law, and it was enacted in the 1500s, guys. Uh, uh, it, it basically states that beer won't have nothing but barley, uh, hops, uh, water, and yeast. Four ingredients. So they don't put any of that horse hockey shit in their beer. So, great beers if you, do, if you don't want a lot of that extra crap that the American macro lagers stuff in their beers. So, uh, it's a great, uh, good quality beer. That's, that's where I'm trying to go with this. Uh, uh, something that's nice, crisp, and refreshing. I refer to these beers to like lawnmower beers. Uh, but they are exceptional lawnmower beers as far as I'm concerned. The, uh, the beer is a 5.5 percenter. On the label here it says Munich Gold, finest lager. Five and a half percent in uh, best before uh, November of 2016. So uh, low ABV beer, uh, but it doesn't have any of that crap in it. So uh, good quality stuff coming out of Germany. Uh, uh, there, there really is. I don't buy a lot of these beers because they produce a lot of lagers, and this is considered a, uh, uh, a either a Munich Hells lager or a Dortmunder. So, uh, and what that is, let me read the commercial description here. Munich Gold closely resembles our Munchner Hells in terms of taste and mainly owes its popularity to a slightly higher original gravity and the mal malty note. The result is a full body yet mild taste which delivers an increasingly bitter note before culminating into its aromatic finish. A real treat for the true beer connoisseurs. The types of barley grown in the Swabian Juru in the Upper Palestine region of Bavaria are excellently suited for the production of this timely, timeless classic. Hackershore has been brewing beer the traditional barring manner since 1417. Long freaking time there. Hundreds of years, guys. So, you reckon they got it figured out? I think they do. The high quality beers the brewery produces all brewed in accordance with the Bavarian Purdy Law and contain only water, malt, and hops. So, no adjuncts, no garbage, no nothing that's going to uh, probably cause you to have a massive hangover the next day because it's all pure ingredients. Going to have a good quality taste to it. So, uh, as you notice, I've got my typical. I could have used a pint glass, but this is my lager glass. This, uh, this is when I'm doing beer reviews on lagers. This is what I'll bring out. So, haven't used it in quite a while. Uh, 
Cuisine is German, of course, and the cheeses are buttery brie, brie uh, gouda, Havarti, Swiss, and the meat is pork fish and shellfish. Uh, glass bar is flute, Pilsner glass, or poker. This is my Pilsner glass. Not recommended for extended salarying. So let's get the cap off of this big boy. And like I said, not my typical beer, but a great, good quality beer. No adjuncts. No that horse hockey that they put in American Macro Lagers. And if you are drinking the Bud Miller's Coors or any of that kind of crap, this is going to be very similar to that, except it's going to have a lot more taste to it, guys. Uh, you're going to get a lot more hop profile uh, as far as European-style hops. And uh, you're going to get some biscuity malt, and you're going to get a whole lot of things that's going to make this beer a little more enjoyable. Especially if you're looking for some taste in your beer and, and not just drinking, guzzling it to get shit-faced. So. Uh, about a half a finger of heaven up pour, a very light golden color. Let's get a nose on it. Right off the bat, I can tell. If I was smelling a, a Coors Miller or a Bud, I mean, I'm going to get rice and corn and, and on the nose. Where this, you're getting a biscuity malt. You're getting some floral herbal aroma for the hops. A little bit of grassy notes, which are similar to the macro lagers, but it's got such a much better aroma to this beer than those macros do. Very easy drinking for a 5.5 percenter. Going to be tasty, I'm sure. Cheers. Thank you, sir. Wow, that's delicious, guys. A great beer. A great beer if you want to pick up something. Now this is more than likely, I have to say pretty much guaranteed, it's going to be more expensive than an 18 or a 24 pack of, of the macros. But you're going to get a great quality beer. Something that's going to have a little taste to it. And like I said, in my personal opinion, uh, you're not going to get the hangover you're going to get because I think that's caused by all that junk they put in there. On top of your drinking 12, 18 of them at a setting. I mean, you're dehydrating your body when you drink that many. I mean, you run into the bathroom every 15, 20 minutes or so, and you're just, all your minerals and electrolytes or everything are going out of your body. And uh, we're this, and not a lot of people, I wouldn't think, are going to session 18 of these at a time. I mean, uh, there's no use in doing that. Uh, you can drink. You can you can you can get a higher ABV beer and drink less of them, and and still get that massive buzz if that's what you're looking for, and not have to drink 18, 20 of them at a setting. Drink drink three or four, eight to ten percenters. You're gonna get the same buzz basically. So and you're not losing all your electrolytes and feeling like crap the next day. So. Very crisp, very light, very refreshing. Alcohol is basically non-existent as far as taste. Very well made beer. Awesomely well made beer, guys. A great lawnmower beer is which what I call them. Something very light, low ABV. Where you come in and have one or two of these that's uh, chilled down real well. And go back out and do what you were doing. Working in the yard, cutting the grass, whatever. And not be weighed down by... 10% beer or something like that. So, well, let me take it back. Let her have a couple of sips out of it. Uh, these style of beers, guys, I don't sip on these for 45 minutes or so like I do the ales and the stouts and stuff and IPAs. I usually drink these lagers fairly quick, uh, 15, 20 minutes, and I'm going to be done with it. So, I'll be right back. All right, guys, I'm back. I'm sipping on it about, yeah, about 20 minutes or so, 25 minutes. Very nice, very pleasant, very clean, very crisp, very refreshing. Uh, very light bodied, uh, a very nice uh, lager. I call these lawnmower beer guys. Uh, it's nothing new, <laughs> that is not a derogatory statement. Uh, very crisp and clean. Uh, like I told you earlier, Bavarian Pretty Laws, all they're going to have in there is the 
water, hops, yeast, and the barley or, or wheat, depending on what type of beer that they're brewing. But no adjuncts, no corn, no rice, no adjuncts. So uh, very nice, very crisp, very clean, very well made. Been doing it since 14, 14 17. You reckon they got it figured out? Damn right they do. Uh, they know how to make a great beer, or they wouldn't be have making making it for almost 700 freaking years. So, very well done, very well German style beer, uh, very light, very crisp. So, let's do the final chug here. And I usually go against the grain on both rate beer and beer advocate when I do these kind of beers because it's not a macro lager. It's not got a bunch of junk in there. Uh, you you don't session. Uh, 15, 18, 24 of these kind of beers. You just don't do it. Well, that is delicious. That is a great change up for me. Very nice. Nice floral, herbal hop presence. They're probably using a, a Tassaz or a or Goldings, or Tetanang, or some other European hops. It's not that up in your face, uh, West Coast style, that you're going to find in an IPA where you got the piney, grapefruity, pineapple taste. It's, it's not that. It's not that at all. More herbal, floral type of hop presence in this. Something easy drinking. Uh, somebody that's drinking the macro lagers uh, would probably find this very refreshing. So, if you want to get in something with a little more taste, and not something that's going to be super bitter, that's going to blow your palate out of your mouth, or, or something like that. I would suggest starting off going from one of those to something like this. Uh, something a little cleaner, a little crisper, a little tastier. So, with that being said, guys, got the ABV on the bottle. It's got the Enjoy By Date. I'm not a big fan of the Enjoy By Date. I'd much rather see the bottle on date on this. Uh, but, uh, it is what it is. This comes straight. A lot of people ask me, why don't you do this beer? And I had somebody ask me, why don't you do a Puerto Rican beer? I, I ain't seen any Puerto Rican beers. Uh, a lot of the beers that are available in other countries, South America and stuff, unless somebody actually sends them to me, and a lot of times they actually have to bring them out of the country to send them to me. I had uh, Daniel, uh, a guy that lives in, uh, in South America, he was coming to New York. He told me it was illegal for him to ship beers from uh, Brazil to me. So he had to actually pack them in his suitcase. And then once he got to New York, he was able to ship them to me here in Virginia. So uh, don't nobody get arrested or put in jail for shipping beer. That that would suck. So uh, a lot of beers, if they're not available here, not not exported to here, I cannot get them. So he asked me why, why I haven't reviewed this beer from this country or that country. Uh, if it's not exported here uh, or not available here, I have no recourse. Uh, I can't get it. So, this is a great beer. Uh, Hacker Shore and Paul and are both uh, brew some very tasty beers. They're not going to be that up in your face, poppy style of beers. They're going to be a more cleaner, more crisper, uh, a more easy, lighter drinking beer. So, but they do make some big, heavy beers too. Uh, don't get me wrong there. Uh, if you want some, some stuff that's going to knock you on your butt, they do make those too. So, uh, I do appreciate it, Sarah. This is a great beer. Uh, I'm gonna give this. Uh, I'm gonna give this an eight. I do think it's an A beer. It's a well-made beer. I mean, like I said, they've been doing it almost 17 uh, since uh, uh, 1417. So almost next year will be 700 years. So is that right? 14, 2000, 2016, something like that. Six or 700 years. I don't even know what the hell they're doing anyway. So uh, over to uh, Beer Advocate. They say 84 in a good range. I think it's a tad better than that, but I understand, unless it blows the hair back on, or socks off on these guys at Beer Advocate or Rate Beer, they're really not going to give it a big score. And and this, even though it has more taste than what you're going to get from a macro lager, it's, it's, it's a very easy drinking, and and like I said, unless it really uh, excites these guys, they're not going to give it a good score. And where I'm just trying to be as honest as I can, uh, well-made beer, it is. And over to... Uh, Rate beer, rate beer says, ha, 40 overall. They're on crack there. I mean, God almighty. And I usually agree with uh, the ratings over here, but they ain't got a clue here. A 40. Somebody will take that bottle and smack some people upside the head with that. But 86 in the style. Uh, if I was putting a numeric rating on this, guys, 
I would probably give it a, a 90 or a 91. Uh, I, I do think it's an A beer. It's a very well uh, made crafted beer. So very tasty, very enjoyable for me. Uh, I don't drink these kind of beers very often. It's a very nice change up. So if you've had this one from Hacker Shore, this is their Munich Gold. Uh, Seth's finest lager. And like I said, uh, these guys are called a Dortmund or a Hell's lager. Very tasty. Very well done. Alright guys, come on back tomorrow. Let's go see what we can dig out of the fridge. Uh, I got one more uh, beer that she sent me. Might even do that one uh, and uh, see where it is. Uh, these lagers and stuff, I don't like to keep around very long. Uh, I like to, I'm, like my IPAs, I like to drink them as fresh as possible. So, come on back. Let's see what we can dig out.